So I'd like to start with a quick story. I was 17. It was the summer after my senior year of high school. And I had just returned to a family reunion after having left to attend my freshman orientation. Everyone was excited to hear about my college plans, so I told them all about it. How I would be attending the University of Maryland. How I'd be a student in the Honors Humanities program. And I was planning on becoming an English major. And with college matters already on the table, as it turned out, my AP scores had arrived that morning. And I'd scored a five in AP calculus. So that's a gen ed requirement out of the way. I would never have to take a math class again in my life. It seems like this would be a time for celebration, right? But it's at this moment that my Aunt Anne, who is a wonderful, loving woman, but a woman who studied civil engineering in college, couldn't hold her tongue any longer. Casey, you're just too smart to study the humanities. So this prompts a chorus of laughter from my surrounding family members, and then a series of jokes at my expense. You know, it's OK, Casey. You'll be the best red bum on your entire city block. Don't worry, Casey. I'm sure your brother will have a very comfortable sofa. <laughs> but you know, we're all family. So eventually they settle down. And supportively, my uncle David tells me, just find a job that you love, Casey. And you'll never work a day in your life. But being the good sport that I am, and staying in line with the joke, I tell him, if I choose to major in the humanities, then I might not get a chance to. So the point of this story is that we're all familiar with this rumor, this idea that the humanities are a waste of time. When people are talking about the humanities, they seem to be saying that you can't find a job in them. You can't make a living. The humanities have no real life value. This is, of course, a lie if I've ever seen one. The humanities are how we define real life value. After all, what are they but an attempt to get closer to this idea of a real life? There are tools for understanding ourselves and one another. I don't know if there's any greater real life value than that. So I think there's an inconsistency in this sort of criticism. And I think it emerges from the way people treat the abstract concept of real life value. They seem to de-emphasize the life and focus more on these words, real value, which they then translate into real money and translate again into things like jobs and benefits and tax brackets. And so you can see this sort of rupture taking place as this once full and round idea of real life value is being flattened into simple material value. And from there you can see this conflation between the words real and material, real and monetary. And so this, uh, sorry, I'm forgetting a bit. So this sort of marks a conceptual cleavage between the ideas of the personal and the pragmatic as you see this split between what stays and what gets removed in the flattening. Um, the side that stays is the one that gets, uh, or that people are thinking about when discussing the, when discussing, wow, this is really embarrassing. I'm sorry, guys. This, this is the side that people think about when discussing majors and courses of study. Uh, the, it's the side that consists of all the material necessities, the means by which we live, the way we pay the bills and feed the kids. But the other side is equally important, the side that gets removed. And it's, uh, it's equally deserving of our consideration. It's the side that gives meaning to everything else, makes us want to pay the bills and feed the kids, lends some sort of purpose to our lives. And so, like I said, it creates this conceptual cleavage between the personal and the pragmatic and grounds this widespread assumption that the two things must always be mutually exclusive. And so this split was the mistake I kept seeing made in people's erroneous criticisms of the humanities. And eventually things got to the point where I was very desensitized to this. But then I started paying attention to people's defenses of the humanities, and I was alarmed to find the exact same sort of mistake was being made. I was given facts about hiring managers and how they prefer employees with a strong writing background. I was told about the need in all professional fields for humanities-based skills like textual analysis, clarity and communication, and so on. I learned that humanities majors actually have the highest rate of acceptance into medical school. This one really blew my mind just because I couldn't believe how uncomforting it was. Why would I, someone passionate about literature, be at all comforted by the knowledge that medical school might still be in my future? The idea of being a medical doctor terrifies me. I thought I'd close that door by becoming an English major. But there it was, looming in front of me again. But so the mistake here is, again, that they're trying to defend the humanities in terms of pragmatism, 
how to turn the next four years into a job. And as completely accurate and well-meaning as these are defenses are, they aren't the sort of defense that the humanities need. When people are saying that the humanities aren't necessary, they aren't talking about politicians and lawyers, teachers and social workers. Everybody knows that these jobs are necessary. That's why these jobs get to exist. The people who need defending are the students who love music and art and philosophy and want to study these things even if a clear job isn't waiting for them. The history majors who know that there aren't enough museums in the world to hire all of them and yet still really want to study history. To defend the humanities by their pragmatism is to offer comfort to those who are already more or less comfortable, while those of us who are receiving the bulk of society's criticism are being left in the lurch. For us, you need to defend the humanities' personalism. Assume the premises of the opposition. Agree, however incorrectly, that the humanities have no practical value. And then tell them that it changes nothing, that we will be studying them anyway. Because the humanities are innate, as innate as the human experience itself. And just as much as we can't help living our lives, we also can't help trying to make some sense out of them. And then, when you embrace personalism, this miraculous thing happens. Pragmatism follows. For example, in the first half of the 20th century, it was believed that children had to be raised with absolute, prag or absolute discipline. And so, in institutions like boarding schools and uh, orphanages, the care of young children was attended to with mechanical, factory-like pragmatism. And as a consequence of this, in orphanages with newborn babies, infants that had shown every sign of good physical health would be found dead in their cribs. As it turns out, infants have a fail-safe built into their bodies to prevent them from suffering starvation. If they aren't cradled and cared for and shown adequate attention, they'll give up. The reason for this wasn't discovered until Harry Harlow conducted his experiments on contact comfort and realized what an important psychological need is attended to by simple physical affection. It may seem obvious to us now what an important role love plays in any sort of healthy childhood, but at the core of this is a principle that we always find new ways of forgetting. Sometimes the most deeply personal things are also the most practical. Examples like this one demonstrate the strength of these intersections, the arenas in life where real life value is allowed to exist in its original form. So for my Honors Humanities Keystone project, I set to crafting such an example in the form of a novel to show this sort of strength and demonstrate the true extent of the humanities' personal and pragmatic necessity. I won't go into the details, so I'll just say that I did it with an allegory by representing within my main characters the different fields of the humanities. And there it is. Even if my explanations may have seemed complicated or, at points, forgetful and poorly articulated, my defense of the humanities is actually simple. All that needs to be done is to literalize them. Show them in unambiguous terms as living, breathing people. They're not personal or pragmatic, but a union of the two, a blurring of the lines. They are real life value. The humanities are the human experience. The two things are and have always been one and the same. Thank you all.